What's up, monkeys? Welcome back to the channel that is driven by addiction dopamine. <laughs> so today we're... God damn, I'm stoned as a motherfucker. Ooh, put that bug out, folks. God damn. So look, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about chomos in prison and guards making bets. This is a crazy story, man. This happened to me back when I was in the federal penitentiary, USP Lee in the feds. First thing you got to know about the feds, man, is when you go into the feds, they're automatically going to sell you up with people that are of your race. White guys with white guys, Indians with Indians, black guys with black guys, so forth and so on. Just keeps the drama down, man. Keeps the trouble down. So I've been there for about a year. I was coming back in from the yard one day and there's some dude in my cell. I've been in a single cell for like six or eight months, man. There ain't supposed to be nobody in my cell, right? So I come in, I'm like, oh, okay. So I guess they moved you into my cell. Now, I don't remember this kid's name, man. Really don't care. But I do remember that I asked about his charge and I asked about where he was from. So when you go into the feds, you get a number, okay? Mine was 10290084. So it's five numbers and then three numbers. The last three numbers are about where you're from. So like 084 or 083 are both from Virginia. And I'm pretty sure this kid's numbers was uh, 000 or 001, which meant he was from the military. So when you see these numbers, you start to learn, you know, some of these numbers as you're in there for a while. So, I'm, you know, I know he's from the military. And then I ask him, like, what's your charge? He says, I got caught selling Hummers. Now, I'm not sure if these were the type of Hummers that have four tires and, and four seats and, and like, you know, guns on them and stuff. Because, damn. Like, if that's what you were selling, bro, okay. But I think it was a different type of Hummer. And I think it was a type of Hummer that shouldn't be hummed. So just like anybody else, when you first come into prison, man, you don't have anything, right? You're waiting on your money to catch up with. You got nothing but the khakis and the boots and the crap they gave you. So as soon as a new dude hits the yard, most of the fellas will throw out what they got. Yo, here I got some socks. Yo, here I got some shorts. Here I got a couple t-shirts. Man, you need a pair of shoes. What size you wear? I remember I bought him a pair of shoes. I don't know, 20, 30 bucks, probably got him a pair of used shoes. Gave him a pair of shoes, and I fed him. So, you know what I mean? We ate pretty good. Me and my buddy, Paulie Chartier, rest in peace, man. He's got to be dead by now. He's 62 when he went home 15 years ago. But we ate good. So I remember feeding this dude, man, you know? So he's, he's in the cell with me for about a week. And then there's this thing that comes on the TV, and it doesn't come on very often, but it's a Victoria's Secrets, you know, lingerie, swimsuit, model edition and everybody in the prison is going to watch this. Like, dudes are dogs. Everybody knows this. And when you got a prison full of men that have not seen good-looking women very much, except for on the TV, everybody is lined up to watch this. It doesn't come on until like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. So we're on lockdown once it comes on, right? He doesn't want to get down and watch this. I'm wondering why he doesn't want to get down. I'm like, yo, he's up in the rack, bro. And he's reading the book. Like, why are you reading the book when some of the finest women on the planet are on the TV? So I'm like, yo, you know Victoria's Secrets is on the TV, right? Oh, yeah, man, 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 nah, 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 boo, boo, boo. He gets down, he gets in a chair, he sits behind me, he watches through the window. We're just kicked back, watching through the window from one commercial to the next commercial. That's it. Back up in the rack, reading another book. Probably about kitty diddling, sick, twisted. Another week or so goes by, man. And of course, I think I'm telling the guys about this. I'm like, yo, this dude's kind of weird, man. Like, why would you not watch the Victoria women like why would you not so i think one of the dudes end up doing like a, a check on him or something somehow it comes back folks i'm on the yard one day bro i'm on the yard folks he's a chomo and i don't fed this dude i don't bought this dude sneakers I, man he doesn't slept in it no so boom there's one way moves in federal prison man is five minutes back to the unit and five minutes out waiting on the next move, going back, smash time. And I don't, dude, I don't even like to fight. I'm not a tough guy. I'm going to tell you all this straight up, man. I'm just not a tough guy. That's not me. I would rather not fight than fight. That's just how I am. But he's got to go. Like, you've disrespected every single code and every single thing about prison and me, and you just shit all over me, right? So I'm going back. I'm going to smash him. Before I can get back there, he's already checked in. Now, if you don't know what checking in is, bro, that's where you go to PC, you go to protective custody, you go to the guard, you're like, oh, I fear for my life. That's what they did. Took the kid away. He had just got commissary. And I got lucky. Look, there's a deer right there, bro. How cool is that shit? Huh? You see him? 
He just stood right there and stared at me. Ha! <laughs> I'm not even supposed to be in this field. All this is for sale. Somebody could pull up any time and give me a trespassing charge. But hey, you know what this is? My care face, bro. Come back and he had just got commissary. He ordered like $200 worth of commissary. I got cop mouth. Hold on. He had a new lock. He had all that stuff on there. And if you know anything about this, bro, I'm going to take that boot and I'm going to beat that lock right off of there. Don't rob people in prison. This is the main thing that I want you to learn from this video as well is never rob people in prison. This is a very bad thing. But in this occasion, it was acceptable because he was a chomo and a scumbag. So bang, I beat his lock off. I took all of his commissary. I remember when the guards came by to get his stuff, like I sent out a bag like this big, like poof. You know what I'm saying? Here's, I don't know if I sent him soap. I didn't send nothing, bro. You're in the hole and I wanted him to suffer. I wanted to take everything he had from him, bro. Time goes on. Two days goes by. Now, here's the craziest part of the story. Two days goes by and you got a counselor and you got a case manager. These are the people that classify you. They put you in a cell. They do, <laughs> deer's jumping around everywhere. They do all this different stuff, but they have to be together to pull you in the back to have a meeting. You know, one person can say that the other, whatever. They got to have a witness. So they pull me in the back. Folks, what happened to your celly? Bitch, you know what happened to my celly. You knew he's a motherfucking chomo when you put him in there too, didn't you? Probably didn't say it just like that. Because, you know. Anyways, you know where my celly is, man. You know he checked in. He's like, blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that. We wanted to talk to you about it. He's like, but the crazy part, he said, Folks, I bet him, he's pointing at the counselor, He's like, I bet him $25 that that boy wouldn't last 24 hours in your cell. What? What the fuck did you just say? He bet. On my fucking freedom, bro. I had two and a half years left. I had two kids on the street. My baby's mother had died. And I was in prison. And you're betting on my freedom. 25 bucks. These people are supposed to protect you. They're supposed to protect him. They weren't supposed to put him in my cell. Where they knew he was going to get hurt. And then they bet on it. Now don't get it twisted, bro. Hey. Hey. Spanking monkeys dot store. So I have no love for any kind of pedo. Don't get it twisted. I have no love. But the fact that these people are put in place to protect the inmates and then they make a bet on your freedom, your life, your bodily harm. Mm, what do you think about that, bro? Like, drop a comment. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about the people that are supposed to protect you in jail not protecting you or your loved ones? Have you ever had this happen to you? So anyways, man, you know, long story short, I'm telling them, I'm like, yo, I can't believe you did that. Don't ever put nobody else in my cell again because there's not going to be anybody just put in my cell without me checking them out from now on, which it should have been done anyways, man. The prison was still being set up to the point of being able to run uh, paperwork like we'd really wanted to. You know, you could just make a phone call and have somebody do it now, but it wasn't like that back then, man. It was a little bit different. You know, this is 2003, 2004, like flip phones was barely a thing, bro. Um, so, yeah, it was a little bit different back then. But, I, you know, uh, it was definitely a shitty situation for me, man. And from that point on, I think I got a celly. I, I remember a celly. Matter of fact, his name was Joe. And Joe liked to work out, so me and Joe got it in, man. Um, but, yeah, that was uh, one time that was in prison for me, man, that I thought was one of the craziest situations that I think I ever went through. Just the fact that those people were supposed to be there. And like, you kind of look to them and trust them a little bit, but then you hear about how people don't trust them and you wonder why. And that right there is one of the reasons why most people don't trust them is because they find things like that out, man. I mean, I got no reason to lie about it. So if you heard about it from me or somebody else, chances are you should believe it, right? Anyways, man, thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks for being here. I have just opened a store. If anybody is interested in some pretty cool shirts, I have the cash rate all pedophile shirt. I have a fuck fentanyl shirt. I have a couple different shirts, spankingmonkeys.store. Go check that out, man, if you want to help support these videos. And uh, I might be doing a couple questionnaires on the community post to ask you guys what stories you would like to hear about, man. So stay tuned for that. So until the next time, don't sweat the petty things. Pet the sweaty things.